Okay, we're going to move on to surgery, and our topic is going to be post-operative fever. And we're going to begin with bacteremia. Bacteremia is a fever exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit um, and the onset of chills 30 45 minutes after the start of a procedure. If you see fever over 104 with chills and fever 30 to 45 minutes after the procedure started, I want you to think it's going to be a bacteremia. And we're going to manage these patients with blood cultures times three and then the immediate start of antibiotic therapy. <clears throat> Next is atelectasis. And atelectasis is pretty important because it's our most common cause of fever post-op day one. Now, how do we manage these patients? First, we want to do a chest x-ray, and then we're going to do incentive spirometry as well as deep breathing exercises. And we want to basically improve ventilation in these patients by doing these things. And if all else fails, we're going to go to bronchoscopy, but we only do bronchoscopy if it's absolutely necessary. Our next topic after this is pneumonia, and pneumonia is going to occur three days post-op if there's no recovery from atelectasis most of the time. So if we see post-op fever day one, I want you to think atelectasis. Post-op fever day three, I want you to think pneumonia, and it's usually because of an unrecovered atelectasis. And on the chest x-ray, we're going to see infiltrates, and we're going to manage these patients by sputum cultures followed by antibiotic therapy based on the sputum cultures. UTIs. UTIs are also fever that starts post-op day three, and we're gonna manage these patients with urinalysis and urine cultures, and we're gonna treat based on the results of the urinalysis and the urine cultures. So day one post-op, atelectasis is the most common cause of post-op fever. And on day three, we can get pneumonia or UTI. And usually if it's the pneumonia, it's gonna be because of an unrecovered atelectasis, and we're gonna do sputum cultures followed by antibiotic therapy. Um, and if it's a UTI, it's gonna be a fever that starts post-op day three, and we're gonna manage them by getting urinalysis and urine culture and treating them with antibiotics based on the results. <clears throat> post-op day five fever, it's gonna be deep, thrombophlebitis. This is going to be fever that starts on post-op day five and basically we're going to manage these patients based on the Doppler of the deep leg and the pelvic veins and we have to anticoagulate these patients with heparin. It's really important and remember usually the physical exam is worthless in these patients so we have to do a Doppler of the deep leg and the pelvic veins and anticoagulate these patients with heparin. So post-op Fever day one, what is it? Atelectasis. Fever 30 to 45 minutes after the start of the procedure, bacteremia. Post-op fever day three, it's going to be either pneumonia or UTI. If it's a pneumonia, it's usually because of an unrecovered atelectasis. And post-op fever day five is going to be deep thrombophlebitis, and we're going to do a Doppler of the deep leg, leg and pelvic veins, and we're going to anticoagulate these patients with heparin. Post-op day seven, we're gonna be thinking wound infection, okay? And on physical exam, we're gonna see warmth, we're gonna see tenderness, we're gonna see erythema, okay? And post-op day seven, if there is an abscess present, we're gonna do drainage of this abscess. If there's cellulitis, we're gonna treat these patients with antibiotics accordingly. And if you can't tell the difference between these two, we're gonna do a sonogram diagnostically to distinguish between them, okay? So post-op day seven is gonna be wound infection. If it's an abscess, we're gonna incise and we're gonna drain. If it's cellulitis, we're gonna give antibiotics accordingly. And if we can't tell these two apart, we're gonna do a sonogram to diagnostically distinguish between them. And a deep abscess usually occurs on post-op day 10, through 12, okay? Sometimes people say 10 to 15, but this is gonna be a deep abscess, and basically we're going to do a CT scan of the appropriate body cavity, and the management is gonna be percutaneous radiolo radiologically guided um, drainage, and this is all our causes of post-operative fever. So quick review, 30 to 45 minutes after the start of the procedure, we're thinking bacteremia. I'm going to do blood cultures times three and start antibiotic therapy. 
Post-op day one is probably our most important one to know. Post-op fever day one, atelectasis. We're gonna do chest x-ray and we wanna improve their breathing by doing incentive spirometry and deep breathing exercises. And if this fails, we're gonna do bronchoscopy, but only if it's absolutely necessary. Um, most of the time, if they don't recover from the atelectasis on day one, they can go to pneumonia, which is a cause of post-op fever, um, post-op day three. And we're gonna do a chest x-ray, we're gonna see infiltrates. If we see these infiltrates, we're gonna do sputum cultures followed by antibiotic therapy appropriately. UTI also occurs on day three, post-op fever day three. And we're gonna do urinalysis and urine culture and treat these patients with antibiotics based on the results. DVT is gonna be post-op day five. Remember, physical exam is pretty useless in these patients, so we have to do Doppler of the deep leg and pelvic veins and anticoagulate these patients with heparin. If we see fever, post-op fever day seven, um, if it's gonna be an abscess, we're gonna incise and drain them, and if it's cellulitis, we're gonna give them antibiotics. Remember, if we can't tell these two apart, we're gonna do a sonogram diagnostically to distinguish between them. And if the fever is post-op day 10 through 12, we're gonna do a CT scan of the appropriate body cavity, and we're gonna do a percutaneous radiologically guided uh, drainage, which is going to be therapeutic in these patients.